so this is part two part one if you missed part one we just we kind of did an overview of all parts so part one was don't withhold your gifts we did scriptures practical examples examples part two which we're getting to now was don't forget is don't forget to breathe and we kind of did an overview of what this will be talking about in part one and then part three we did an overview of that as well which is this looks like a job for god so if you missed part one i encourage you to check it out and then i put in part one to check out part two as well but we're in part two now which is talking about don't forget to breathe you know when you are um going through certain seasons you're going through things financially or just emotionally and um you're you're dealing with things internally right you're going through certain seasons you're going through certain winds and rains and storms you're dealing with family matters kids um health um you're dealing with things ministry wise you're dealing with things on the job you're dealing with things in your marriage you're dealing with things in your career etc etc whatever it is whether it's small big spiritual natural sometimes it could be hard to feel like you sometimes it could be sometimes it could feel overwhelming sometimes and god doesn't want us to be anxious and worried or overwhelmed but it doesn't mean that those those spirits or those forces won't try to come up against us right you can look at this psychologically you can look at this spiritually you can look at this naturally you know but god doesn't want us to forget to breathe just like we have physical air and we have to breathe we have to breathe just think about it if you stop breathing right now what's gonna happen to you that's a rhetorical question but what's gonna happen to you if you stop breathing right now right if someone is drowning wow thank you Lord. someone is drowning underwater for even just a few moments and they don't get out and receive cpr or get that water out of them what could they do they could they could possibly die or if they end up getting to the hospital it's, it, it's going to take, you know, so it's like you can't forget to breathe. When you're going through good times and you're happy and everything is well, you got to breathe. When you're going through hard times, you're going through storms, you're going through winds, you're going through rains, you're going through things you don't understand. You're going into uncharted territory. You're dealing with things. You still have to breathe because God is the God of the mountain and he's the God of the valley. You know, he, we're going to do some scriptures on that, but he's the one that has given you the breath. So you can't think or allow the enemy to lie to you and say, well, God created me, gave me breath. I, I'm breathing. He's, he's, he, he's allowed me to live the life that I've lived. And when I say that, everything is not on God. There are some things that we got to take accountability for. There's some things the enemy, there's some things that's the Lord's doing, but everything is not always on him. But we can't forget to breathe. Just as it's important and imperative for you to physically and naturally breathe, you got to spiritually breathe. Kira, how do I spiritually breathe? Pray. Cry. Meditate. Confess the word. Listen to the word. Permeate your air, your um, atmosphere with praise and worship. Praise God. Keep giving that to him. Keep staying connected with him no matter what through it all see because you're just like um your 13th birthday and your 38th birthday or your 30th birthday is not gonna look the same your second birthday and your 52nd birthday is not gonna look the same okay as we have a uh, summer spring winter and fall and those are you know physical seasons we have spiritual seasons as well we did a lot of teachings and videos on that but every season, every day of your life is not going to always be the same. You have to remember to breathe and know, okay, the God that created me, the God that formed me, the God that gave me purpose is going to help me to get through whatever I need to get through. If I'm in a good place, I'm in a good land, he's going to have a better land for me. I'm going to work this level and partner with him and agree with him and be what I need to be on this level and get what I need to get on this level and learn what I need to get, do with this level and everything allow him to work in me, through me, his will in me, through me, for me whatever he want to do but there's always a greater level you know, it's just like a, a um, a, it's just like a um, pyramid, it's going to keep going up if you feel like you're here there's another level up, if you're up God's going to keep taking you up so whatever it is you got to remember to breathe and some of you need to physically breathe 
that stress you're taking on more than you need to some people say well you don't understand i got this on my plate i have to help this person i gotta deal with this i gotta deal with that I feel like i'm doing it on my own but you can't tell me you can't look me in my eyes and tell me that god calls you to take on all of that because the thing about god is when he when he calls us to it he's going to give us the grace for it and a lot of times if you're independent and you had the independent mindset like i did before these last two three years almost you have this independent you have, you have this independent mindset where you're going to take on this much because you're so used to doing it and if i don't do it this way it's not going to be correct but that's not always true sometimes pride can stop you from believing god for help and his resources sometimes pride can stop you from feeling like well they won't do it good enough or their way is because it's not my way it's not the best way or if i don't do it it won't be done the right way but you could be, you could, and, and that is true for some instances, but for other instances, that's not always the truth. You could be blocking your own self and put unnecessary screen and, and stuff on you, you know, and then look at your health and different things this could be causing in your physical health. That's not God telling you to do all those things. And I understand, because even like with me, when God gives you big things to do and you have like a lot on your plate, it's like, God, how am I going to do it? But he'll help you with it. Like you'll, even if you get tired and weary, he'll give he'll give you that exchange. Like that Matthew eleven twenty eight, he'll give you his strength. He'll give you grace. You partner with him. It, it'll be it, it'll be a lot easier because you're not carrying the burden by yourself. So you cannot forget to breathe. Okay. You can't take on everything. You can't have all that stress on you. You can't handle everything. Everything is not meant for you to solve. Everything, God ain't calling you or me to be Holy Ghost Junior. He don't need no help. Not that type of help. Get out of here. Get out of here. Some things you got to get out of here and out of here, y'all. Out of here and out of here. And some things you really have to totally surrender to God. And you have to breathe. Because, like I told you guys before in prior videos, you need you to get to your next level. You need you. And a lot of you feel like, well, if I don't do it this way, or if I don't do it, it won't be done. Look at, you know, and I'm just being honest. Look at people who pass away. Some of them, it was their time to go. Things, it's, they're going to be missed. They're going to be honored. They're going to be loved. They're going to be cherished for the most part. But time is going to keep going on things are going to get done they left their mark they left their imprint they left their their work their legacy what they're going to be remembered for all those things you know and especially if they took their final breath in in christ and with christ then you know what resting place they're in but things got done some of you you've lost family members you've lost friends you lost loved ones people close to you you didn't know how you was gonna make it you didn't know how that was gonna work together with the family you know how this is gonna happen how that was gonna happen you know you may have lost a spouse and you're like god how am i gonna go on that's they all i know i'm all they know but god even through that pain and all that he give you the grace second by second moment by moment hour by hour to keep going on and he helps you. He guides you to people. He guides people to you. He allows you to keep going on. So I don't know who that's for. Don't forget to breathe. Take whatever it is for you. But don't forget to breathe. Some of you practically, your breathing could be going on a vacation. Okay? Your breathing could be self-care. Stop putting others ahead of you and it's costing you you. The people don't know what you're dealing with and struggling and you're crying and you're stressed and all these things because you're trying to take on all these things and all these people when God hasn't told you to take on all that. That's like, for example, and I'm not going to do it, but all my shoe boxes, if I just pile and pile and pile and pile and pile them up, they're going to get heavy. They're going to get too heavy for me. Some of you need to take off those weights off your mind, off your soul. Take them off of you. God didn't call you to, to, to carry all that. Don't look at me in line and say he did because he didn't call you to carry all that. There were some things that God had had to tell me, really, you have to release this to me. Just causing emotional turmoil. This is causing you to be stressed. I'm not telling you to do all this this way. And then some of you, you really need to work smarter and not harder. 
Your hard work pays off. But I'm telling you, when you with God, He will give you the grace. He will. Some of you, your your breathing, your breath could be turning off your phone. I'm going on a vacation. I'm going to get some ice cream. Listen, I'm going to spend these 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes here. Don't knock on my door. Don't bother me. Don't aggravate me. I'm going to devote this time to pour back into me. I'm going to get in my word during this time, even if it's five minutes. I'm going to get in my word. I'm going to confess scriptures. I'm going to listen to a praise and worship. I'm going to listen to something that's going to bless my soul. I'm going to rest. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to go take, I'm just going to go take this drive. I'll come back and deal with this other stuff at a later time. But right now, I got to pour and invest into me. Okay? That's your breathing. Leaving the toxic relationship. Establishing boundaries. Stop overly explaining yourself. Stop apologizing all the time. You explain everything. You apologize for everything. You overthink everything. You overanalyze everything. You have to stop doing that. You have to learn to breathe. Learn to say yes more. Learn to say no. You gotta, you gotta, you cannot forget to breathe. It's not wrong to put you first. It's not wrong to serve and be a blessing to others and be there for others. But you can't go your whole life doing that and forget about you. You know what that, you know what that crazy here. People may not know it, but God knows that you know it. Jealousy, envy. Bitterness, anger, strife, all this stuff is going to inside my face change because that's what goes on in your heart. It won't look like the outward appearance everybody see. That'll be going on in your heart. And you got to get all that stuff out so, so you can breathe. The breath of God, you got to breathe spiritually. You got to breathe. You got to breathe physically. If I just keep driving, 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 y'all know I drive a lot, travel a lot. I'm on the road a lot. If I just keep driving, 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 driving my car. And I don't stop to check it. I don't stop so it could rest. My car needs rest too. I don't stop to go to the gas station and fill it up. What do you think is going to happen to my car? That's how it is with us. You got to take time to... You got to take time to look at the important things. Whatever your breathing means for you. Your breathing could um, could be, I'm going to start exercising better. I'm going to start exercising more. I'm going to start um, eating better. I'm not going to watch my grandkids all the time while you go live your life because I didn't raise you like this. This is a word for someone. Listen to this video. I don't know who. I'm not going to raise them all the time. And you put them on me because you know I care about my kids and my grandkids. You know, and you maybe have this guilt trip of how I did you or didn't do you or your siblings or whatever. You're not going to put that burden on me. Because I didn't tell you to lay down and sit down and have them. You're going to take care of your kids. I'm going to be here for them as a grandmother or a, a, a grandfather. But you're not going to put that whole burden on me. I'm not going to exempt you of your responsibility of being a parent. Now, certain situations are for certain things. But I'm talking about a person that psychologically guilt trip you. And they're so comfortable. And they're going to dump... I don't want to say dump the kids, but I don't know how, so I'm just going to be honest. They're going to put those kids on you. They don't call. They don't see what you, they don't see what you have to do. They know you had a play, vacation plan. They know you want to go to the store. They know you want to do something. And they just do that because they know they can. They know that for the heart of my grandkids, you know. This could be family. This could be whatever. This could be a good girlfriend or your, your guy friend or a friend. They know they can call you for everything. You be good, you be in, be in the spirit, you feel good. Whatever you was dealing with, you gave it to God. You in a better place mentally, you're okay. And they know they can call you and dump all that crap. Like your name say dumpster. Like your name say garbage man. Dump all your crap on me. And then you, you got all them spirits and all that stuff. And you just gave what you was dealing with to God. And they going by their merry way. You have to breathe. Because if we go without breath for too long, we're going to suffocate. We're going to drown. We're going to feel overwhelmed. And then we're going to feel like, God, what about me? I feel forsaken. What about me? I'm doing all this for other people. I'm doing all da-da-da. But God is not telling you to see certain things God is going to do. It's certain things we have to do. 
Let's read the scriptures, but don't forget to breathe. Like example, if I want that light off, I can pray and fast and, and, and so and praise God all day for the light to go off. But you know what God is going to say to me right here? Your legs work. Your feet work. Get your behind up off the bed and go turn off the light. See what I'm saying? It's right there. It's right there. I can get up and turn it off in less than 10 seconds and be back in this bed. Some of you, you're waiting for God to do all these things, but you know deep down, you know, you know, you're going to have to do what you need to do. Okay? Don't allow people to misuse you, abuse you, make you feel this and that. That's not God. And if it's your season up with them people or you need a break or whatever, then so be it and be okay with that. Your sanity and your peace of mind has to be more. And I told you guys before with that quote, anything that costs you your peace is too expensive. What you have to do, you have to let it go. And sometimes things don't have a um, monetary cost. It doesn't have a physical dollar value cost, cash cost or whatever, credit, whatever cost. If it's costing you your peace of mind, it's robbing you, stealing from you. Look at John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right? We've read that multiple times. But I have come to have to give you life and give you life abundantly to the full. So don't forget to breathe. Okay? I could keep going, but because we're on limited time, excuse me, with these two videos, and I still have to get into this looks like a job for God. Let's read the scriptures. But I hope you got something out of that, of that was for, for you. And let me tell you, even if you are in the elevated place and you've gone through to get to that place for God, breathe. Relish the air that comes with that place. People don't know what you went through, and some people do know what you went through, but they feel like you don't deserve it. So what? You still need to breathe in your blessings from God because he's the one who gave it to you. Stop apologizing. Stop doing it. Everything don't have to be perfect. Everything don't have to be your way. Everything don't have to be through your lens or your perspective because your perspective and lens could be very jaded. My perspective and lens could be very jaded. That's why we can't lean on our own understanding. Going back to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, we got to lean on the Lord. Listen, Job 33, verse 4. Job 33, verse 4 says, The Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. Somebody say, God gives me life. That's Job 33, 4. Genesis 2, 7 is the next one. It says, The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. That's Genesis 2, 7. 2 Timothy 3, 16. Second Timothy three sixteen says, "All scripture is, all scripture is God breathed." Sorry about that, guys. It's just not doing right today. But all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God (verse seventeen) will do sixteen and seventeen, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's Second Timothy three sixteen through seventeen. But the focal point is sixteen. So that's the end for part two. Now we're going to get into part three. This looks like a job for God. There are some things that God is going to give you the strength and grace to do. He's going to give you the strength and grace to do it. There are some things that God is going to say he wants you to partner with him to do. Right? Whatever your, the way your partner is, the strategy, the code he's given you. We've talked about that multiple times. So I'm going to get into that today. But then there's going to be some things that's only going to take the hand of God to do. And some of you can look back. All of us, if you live, you've lived life, if you saved or unsaved, or preferably everybody on here watching is saved, or if you're not, you dedicate your life to, to God now, right? There's some things in our life that is only going to take the hand of God to do it. It's only going to take the hand of God to move that. 
Right, we know that he gave us authority. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. We know that. But there are some things that only God can do. And we got to step out the way and allow him to be God. If you've done what you can do, God will do what you can't do. He'll honor what you've done, especially if you're doing it unto him and you're giving it to him. And you're surrendering to him. But there are some things that it's only going to take the hand of God to do. I got to be okay with that. You got to be okay with that. And sometimes it's not easy. It's not comfortable to be okay with those things because our human flesh don't like that. We love being in control. We love our independence. We love knowing how it's going to work out. We love knowing the next step. But life don't always go like that. Especially not when you live in the life of, of a Christian and real faith in God. So some things it's only going to be a job for God. Okay? We're going to read. There's a, there were lots of scriptures that came to my mind that I could have read. But I knew for the sake of time. So I just wrote one. 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings chapter 7. We've read this before. We read this before like a year ago. Wow. Let me go there. 2 Kings 7. Okay. It's talking about a, um, the famine. The famine. And the siege is lifted. Okay. And that's um, yeah, 2 Kings 7. If you go back to 6. Um, we read 6 2. But if you go back, the famine in the, um, there's a famine in besieged Samaria in verses 24 through um, 30, 33. But I'm going to focus today on um, just chapter 7. Right? A famine is going on. Just picture this there's a famine going on. And let me, let me, let me say something for someone. When you're facing what seems like an impossible, stubborn situation or whatever, it is so important to keep your faith in God. Because we talked about the different currencies of heaven. Your faith is a weapon. Your love, your hope, your praise and worship, your sowing, your giving, your fasting, your prayers, your confessing, your hearing the word. All those are some of the weapons you have on the actual arm of God. We did teachings on that Ephesians 16 through 18, the Bible partnering with God, believing Him, keeping before you the visions and promise and different things He's giving you. All those are weapons. You know, rest is a weapon. We did some videos on that. Resting in God is a weapon. When you can be freaking out and you could be trying to make moves your own way, but God tell you to rest, trust me, be still and know that I'm God. Psalms 46 10. There are some things that is only for God to do. God is God for a reason and we are who we are for a reason and guys we really have to be okay with that i know genesis tells us that we're made his image and likeness but it don't say that we are god god is who he is and we are who we are and we've got to be okay with that i don't know who i'm emphasizing that for so if your situation is looking like it's a job for god then you got to let god do his job if i hire you or you hire me or however we want to do it just for this quick scenario i hired you to do a job if I could do it or I really want to do it, I wouldn't need to hire you. So I hired you for a reason and vice versa. You hired me for a reason. But it would be bizarre and weird for you to hire me or me to hire you. And I'm doing your job for you. That's going to bring confusion. It's going to make me feel like, well, really, you really don't need me. I really don't need to be here if you're going to do it. Because you're contradicting what the agreement was between us what we spoke about whatever the conversation was the discussion whatever so you have to let you say you trust God you say he's your Lord and Savior you're a master you say you believe him you got to really let God be God you know so let's get into this reading 2nd Kings 7 so I'm going to go back to I really want to read um, the famine and so I want to read this I think we have enough time it's on 24 minutes the focal point is 2 Kings 7, but to kind of give you guys a better understanding of the famine, I want to read, I'm going to actually read um, 2 Kings 6, verse 24 through 32, and then we'll get into 7. Um, but it's also talking about, and we read this before as well, it's also talking about an axe head floats in Elijah's trap, traps blinded Arameans. We're not going to read that today. We're going to focus on this famine and then how the siege was lifted, how God... And his word came through 
and everything that he said came to pass because it was a job for God, okay? So, sometime later, because what happened was Elijah told um, the king not to kill them, told him not to kill them, you know, and all those things, the Armenians, they prepared a great feast for them, send them on their way, okay? So, hold on one second, guys. Let me see something. Yeah, because the king of Aram was at war with Israel, okay? So, sometime later, so there's a famine in besieged Samaria. So, sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army and marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long. And let me tell you, you could be a child of God and still be going through. You can be a child of God and you're not going to just have snow. Not snow. You're not just going. I'm, I'm going to sleep after this, guys. I told you I was really sleepy. I've been up since early. We had a long day yesterday. But um, everything is not going to always be peaches and rainbows. You're going to have to You're gonna have to go through something. You're going to go through something. You're going to go through something. It's not going to be forever, but you're going to go through something. Okay? So, this is a this is a man of God. The king. Not, not the king. Elijah is a prophet. The man of God. Under the leadership of Elijah. Right? He's dealing with these things around also. So, keep that in mind as we're reading this. So, some, some 26 minutes. Sometime later, Ben-Hadad, king of Aram, mobilized his entire army. And marched up and laid siege to Samaria. There was a great famine in the city. The siege lasted so long that a donkey's head, could you imagine eating the head of a donkey? A donkey's head sold for 80 shekels of silver. 80 shekels of silver is about 2 pounds or 1 kilogram of silver. And a quarter of a calf, that's about 1 half pint or 0 0.3 liters of seed pods. Seed pods or as doves dung. You know what dung is, right? For 5 shekels. That's 2 ounces or 55 grams. Go to let you know how serious this is right now. Well, this has been happened, but I'm just saying. We're reading it right now. So, as the king of Israel was passing by on the wall, a woman cried to him, Help me, my lord, the king. The king replied, Listen to this. If the lord does not help you, where can I get help for you? This is the king. From the threshing floor, from the wine press. Then he asked her, What's the matter? But did you, you hear his reply to her, right? So she answered, this woman said to me, give up your son so we may eat him today. And tomorrow we'll eat my son. That's how bad this was. So we cooked my son and ate him. The next day I said to her, give up your son so we may eat him. But she had hidden him. When the king heard the woman's words, he tore his robes. As he went along the wall, I'm glad I'm reading this to y'all so y'all can better understand this before we just jump into seven. As, we, as he went along the wall, the people looked and there underneath Hold on. So when the king heard the woman's words, he tore his robes. As he went along the wall, the people, thank you, God, the, the people looked and there underneath he had sackcloth on his body. He said, may God deal with me, be it ever so severely, if the head of Elijah's son, the Shaphat, remains on his shoulders tomorrow. Yeah, see, it wasn't the king, it was Elijah. So Elijah, now Elijah was sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him. The king sent a messenger ahead, but before he arrived, Elijah said to the elders, don't you see how this murderer is sending someone to cut off my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold it shut against him. It's not the sound of his master's footsteps behind him. Look at Ahab and Jezebel with Elijah, right? So this is Elisha, though. So while he was still talking to them, the messenger came down to him. And the king said, this disaster is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? But we're going back into this looks like a job for God. And you also got to remember why they were in that famine as well. So I'm going to try to read this as quickly as possible in these next few minutes. So Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. This is for somebody, Second Kings 7. Maybe you didn't hear when we did that video last year, but you will hear it today. So this is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a seal of flour will sell for a shekel and two seals of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Listen to this too. The officer on whose arm the king was leaning said to the men of God, Look, even if the Lord should open the floodgates of the heavens, could this happen? You will see it with your own eyes, answered Elijah, but you will not eat any of it. You will not eat any of it. So now there were four men with leprosy. Listen to this, y'all. Now there were four men with leprosy at the entrance of the city gate. They said to each other, Why stay here until we die? If we say we'll go into the city, the famine, if we say we'll go into the city, 
the famine is there and we will die and if we stay here we will die so let's go over to the camp of the Arameans and surrender if they spare us we will live we live if they kill us then we die they like it's a catch-22 we really have nothing to lose right at dusk they got up and went to the camp of the Arameans when they reached the edge of the camp not a man was there for the Lord had caused the Arameans to hear the sound of chariots and horses in a great army so that they said to one another look the king of Israel has hired the Hittite and Egyptian kings to attack us so they got up and fled in the dusk and abandoned their tents and their horses and donkeys they left the camp as it was and ran for their lives the men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp and entered one of the tents they ate and drank and carried away silver gold and clothes and went off and hid them they returned and entered into another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, and guys, I'm going to have to do a part three. I don't want to do it, but i got to finish reading all of this to you guys. So they, um, the men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp and entered one of the tents. They ate and drank and carried away silver, gold, and clothes, and they went off and hid them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Somebody said, this is looking like a job for God. This looks like a job for God. So, verse 9 reading on, then they said to each other, we're not doing right. Like, what we're doing, we're not doing the right thing. Right? We're not doing right. This is a day of good news, and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. Let's go at once and report this to the royal palace. So they went and called out to the city gatekeepers and told them, We went into the Aramean camp, and not a man was there, not a sound of anyone, only tethered horses and donkeys, and the tents left just as they were. We're going to pick up 11 through 20 in the last video for today.